I said in the last video I was going to shorten my Mighty Max axle. Well, a Mighty Max axle can't be shortened. Hey fellow garage fabbers! Those that know me know that I'm that annoying guy that says anything can be done. Anything. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it should be done. For safety reasons or cost reasons, some things shouldn't be done. And shortening the Mighty Max axle is one of those things. Even though I'm not delivering the work that I promised, I'm going to attempt to make it up to you by doing my best to supply you with loads of information. Let's start by talking about what would actually be required to shorten a Mighty Max axle. Because let's face it, you can shorten it, but by the end of this episode, you probably won't want to. Starting with the inner axle shaft. If it's not already obvious, when we shorten the axle housing, the outer part, as we did with the Mustang axle, we also need to shorten the internal axle shafts the same amount. The only options we have, whether we like it or not, is to cut and re-spline our existing axle or have custom length axles made. For the Mustang axle, I opted to work with Dutchman Motorsports. I sent the original axles in and had them both shortened five inches. At Dutchman, they cut your axles to your desired length and then machine the factory splines back in. If, for whatever reason, your axles can't be shortened, like say there's not enough material, which we'll talk about later, Dutchman also offers new custom length axles made to order at what seems like really reasonable prices. I'm unsure if they would modify a Mitsubishi axle, but let's assume for a moment that they would. Here's what you need to pay attention to. If you look at the splines at the inner end of the axle shaft, you'll be able to see that only a section of the splines is used. The shiny section is where the axle splines contact the splines inside the differential. There's a line where the shine stops and an unused portion of the splines is left. This means that you could essentially push this axle in a bit and therefore narrow the axle. All you need to do is cut the excess off the end and remove that same amount from the axle tube. It looks like there's about a quarter inch of unused spline. A whole quarter inch! I don't know how much extra fender room you need, but I can't see myself doing that much work just to gain a quarter inch of clearance on each side. If that's enough for you, stay tuned. If, however, you're like me and want way more, here's the next thing you need to know. If you use a caliper, or even your fingers for that matter, you'll find that the splines themselves are raised higher than the shaft just adjacent to it. That's because the manufacturer used heat and pressure to form the splines. They started with one diameter, and when pressing in the valleys of the splines, the peaks of the splines rose. Imagine squeezing clay through your fingers. The machine shop, on the other hand, will be cutting the splines, which means they need to start with material that's already at or greater than the finished diameter of the splines. That means that this section of the shaft is unusable. In order to successfully re-spline the Mighty Max axle, we would have to move beyond this narrow section where the diameter becomes a little bigger, which is about three and a half inches from the end. That said, the minimum we can shorten a Mighty Max axle is three and a half inches. Three and a half inches! That's definitely more than a quarter inch. All right, the Mighty Max axle should already be close to fitting. I mean, it came on the Mighty Max. I don't know what wheels you're using, but I've got to assume that three and a half inches is going to be way too much. Everyone has their preferences, but to me personally, vehicles with wheels inset inside the fender so far you can stick your head in, man, that's just gross. 
Can we all promise each other to push our wheels as close to the fenders as possible? Let's avoid burning our expensive paint jobs with tire rubbing, but let's make it scary close. The only other option for shortening the shaft is not an option at all, and that's cutting out a section from the middle of the shaft and welding the shaft back together. Please trust me on this one, that's a terrible idea. And it's not a question of if it'll break, but when. Don't do it, and if you'd like some specifics on why, let's start a conversation in the comments. If you've still got your heart set on narrowing that Mighty Max axle, let's continue. Take a look at the axle housing. It's important to notice that the axle tube is not a consistent diameter. That's going to cause problems when shortening. If you recall from the previous video, we had to clear the Mustang axle housing of any imperfections so that the axle would lay flat in the jig. The diameter changes on the Mighty Max axle housing is going to make that pretty much impossible, which also means that the external jig we used in the previous episode is useless for the Mighty Max axle. Our only hope for a precisely shortened Mighty Max axle housing is that internal bar jig we discussed in the last episode. The problem there will be finding the machined parts that fit into the ends of the Mighty Max axle housing. They very well may exist, but I bet it's unlikely. You're more likely going to need to purchase the bar and have the machine parts custom made. My friends, unless you own your own machine shop or have a machine shop homie, that's likely not going to be cheap. Now that I've destroyed your plans to narrow a Mighty Max axle, here's my attempt to make it up to you. Grab a pen. If you are happy with the Mighty Max 6 lug and drum brakes, the 82 to 90 Mitsubishi Montero rear axle is an inch narrower. That Montero is getting pretty rare, but if you can find one, that's a half inch extra clearance on either side. And an added bonus for those of you that are still rocking leaf springs, the Montero axle is a direct swap and will bolt right in. If you want to convert your Mighty Max 6 lug to 5 lug but don't need a narrower axle, the 95 and earlier two-wheel drive Toyota pickup axle is the exact width as the Mighty Max axle. That's 55 inches. A possible bonus, a disc brake upgrade kit was once available for this axle and you may still be able to find one. The Toyota axle is not a direct swap, so leaf spring purchase will need to be welded in if you're not doing air suspension. And lastly, and my personal choice, if you want that five lug conversion, guaranteed disc brakes, a bit more strength, more options for gear ratios and traction capabilities like lockers, limited slip, traction lock, mini spools, there's lots of options from Ford. The Mustang, Explorer, and Ranger all have similar axles that you can use. The downside, which is also the upside, is that all the Ford axles are much too wide for the Mighty Max, which means you have to shorten them. But they're so wide that there is plenty of material, so you can shorten them to just about any length. Not to mention, it's a much more popular axle, so the internal jig is available and the axle housing tube is external jig friendly. All right, everyone, my very, very sincere apologies for this really lame episode that was more of a garage blab episode. Anywho, if you have any questions or additional ideas, please share for everyone in the comments so we can help out our fellow Mighty Maxers. Also, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss any future episodes. I honestly don't know what's next, but some really cool stuff is coming. We'll be building a custom fuel cell, rear suspension, a fully custom dash, and of course, we still need to mount this 4G63 engine. Until the next one, my friends, keep moving forward. <laughs> ham hanging from my, or is that Fred? Sour cream. <laughs>